The Liar, an excerpt from Windswept Gardens, a story about being institutionalized. He was already on the wing when I arrived. I'm not sure how long he'd been there, but it seemed like it had been a while already. They never tell you how long you'll be there. They go out of their way to avoid giving a direct answer. Each person is different. Don't worry about it now. You won't leave until you are ready, was the typical response. The reality was, in my opinion, it depended on your story and your insurance coverage. I don't say that to be harsh, but it's the truth I've come to know based upon my stay there and my experiences after. In any event, he didn't share very much about himself, just that he wasn't ready to leave, and he thought his treatment should be more, more what he never really seemed clear on, just more than he was receiving. He reminded me of Fred Flintstone or John Goodman, maybe because he once played Fred. A bigger, heavy-set white guy, tussled, loosely curled, short hair, with an easy grin that never touched his eyes. I think he would have been funny, or at least fun, in more conventional circumstances. The kind of guy that it was easy to get along with at work or a social function. An acquaintance, but never a friend. It was obvious that he was a liar. In fact, he boasted of it. But he lied about that too. He would often want more value. Most of us receive value to help with the detox process and the anxiety of our reality. Meds were twice daily. Once after breakfast, once after dinner. Around midday, it wasn't uncommon to see him, or rather hear him, crying, asking for an extra dose. He wasn't like Howard. He didn't try and get more of everything, just meds and typically Valium. Later, usually during smoke break, he would boast about how he'd scored an extra dose, that he had fake cried. That's how he'd convinced them. That's also how he claimed he was able to stay so long. Most people might be in and out in two to three days. At the point I noticed him, I'd been there three, and as I mentioned, he'd been there longer. You just tell them what they want to hear, that you're afraid you might self-harm, that you aren't thinking about it right now, then cry a little, you know, fake crying. It works every time. The thing is, I'm pretty sure that he wasn't fake crying, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't okay. I do believe he was a liar. I think he was lying to us, trying to not appear damaged, vulnerable. He was otherwise okay. I appreciated him being there. He was, as I said, easy to get along with. Around day five, he didn't join us for lunch, said he wasn't hungry. I wasn't surprised to find he was lying about that too. When we returned, he was gone. His room was empty, like he'd never been there. Thank you for listening to this excerpt from Windswept Gardens, a story about being institutionalized. If you enjoyed it, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share it. Also, check out the links for the Facebook page to get more information on the project. These excerpts from Windswept Gardens will be released every Sunday on YouTube. Thank you again and see you next time.